are your thoughts towards road racing and, and here at Walker Tavern? Uh, man, <laughs> road racing's awesome. Um, anytime we can do something a little bit different, um, it's, a, it's a cool deal. Um, anytime we can do something different, it's, it's really cool. I've always been a fan of road racing since I was in Legend Cars and Bandoleros. Yeah. Um, I did, uh, let's see, two or three races in a Bandolero, and then uh, actually won like three or four in a Legend car, so a mm -hmm. um, lot of fun, and this is my first time in a stock car, and Watkins Glen, just, it's such a legendary track, I've raced it on video games for years and years, so it's, uh, it's cool to come around here and to see those uh, light blue walls, I mean, it's just, there's nothing like this place, so yeah. uh, we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Going back to your legend cars in Bandolero days, you raced at Atlanta Motor Speedway and Lydia and places like that. So, you know, what was it, you know, describe those learning processes in those cars. I believe those are the first cars you ever raced in. Yep, yep, Bandolero was my first car. Um, every step, there's, you know, a bigger and bigger learning curve. So, um, for me, I think the biggest learning curve for me was going into Bandoleros because I had never done anything before. So get, just getting that base of, you know, what a race car driver needs, uh, what the car needs, how to communicate what the car is doing, the car feel, just learning how to race, really, and, and you know, building your race craft. Um, it was a huge learning curve there, and then each step, for me, it got easier and easier. So going from legend, or from Bandlers to Legend Cars, that was a pretty big step, but I already had a base of what I needed as a race car driver. So. Um, that was good, and then going from Legend Cars to ARCA, um, that was a pretty, pretty sizable learning curve just because, you know, being in stock cars, going from a small, uh, you know, 130 horsepower to a 750 horsepower yeah. stock car, it was pretty big, and, uh, you know, after that, just going into the trucks and the Xfinity, it's just, you know, each time you just gotta get better and better and just gotta learn as much as possible, and you can run maximum laps and, and uh, you know, get good feedback from your crew chief, from your spotter, uh, from maybe teammates or guys that you're racing with. Um, you know, it's, you're just gonna, you just gotta keep, keep moving up the ladder. Do you think, you know, Bandoleros and Legend Cars, do you think that's a really, a good place to, to learn how to, how to, how to, just learn how to drive a race car and how to feel it? Do you think that's a really good place for, pe for kids to start? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously I'm partial to, to Legend Cars and yeah. Bandoleros because that's where I started, but I, I really do think, you know, Bandoleros, it's, it's kind of like a go-kart with a body, um, but it's oval. Mm -hmm. It's oval asphalt, and if you want to make it to, to the Sprint Cup Series, you're going to run, you know, the majority of your races are going to be on an oval and an asphalt. So, um, I definitely, I, I think you see a lot of guys that are, uh, you know, becoming cup champions. You see guys like uh, Kyle Busch and, uh, you know, Joey Logano is, is, you know, really good nowadays, and um, you see guys like, you know, Reed Sorensen, David Reagan, who made it to the Cup Series, and, you know, even Dale Jr. I mean, all those guys started in Legend Cars. So I think it gives a really, really good base. And everybody who said that they, they drove Legend Cars or anybody who's in Legend Cars knows racing says that if you can drive a Legend Car, you can drive anything. So um, it's definitely worked out for me so far getting to the Xfinity Series, and hopefully I can, I can uh, you know, just keep on the ladder. What was that first experience at Atlanta like for you? You know, driving on that Funch Fest track. Were you a NASCAR fan for a long time when you drove into there? Was it like a really big deal for you? Yeah, I was a huge NASCAR fan, you know, starting when I was two or three years old. Uh, my dad went to school in Florida, in fact, in Daytona, so he became a really big race fan. And, you know, we'd always watch it as, a ki as kids. And uh, first race that we went to was Dover when I was five years old, so running Dover early in the season was really, really special yeah. for me. Um, but going to Atlanta we uh we moved from Pennsylvania to Virginia then Virginia to Georgia and that's basically where I grew up is in Georgia um about I don't know 25 30 minutes from the track and but I think it was the first or second year we lived there uh, my dad got uh tickets from from a friend who said yeah let's go and we went and, um I, I can't remember what it was I, it, I think when when you win the championship in Atlanta you get sweet tickets and then you get pit passes and get introduced on the big stage so right. I think the first time I was ever in the pits was in 2008 after I won the Bandolero Championship down there that was just I mean it was mind-blowing being there and seeing I mean I think we got to see uh, Bobby Allison got to meet him and wow. we got to see all the drivers you know a little bit starstruck when, when I first uh, first started going there and then you know like I said we started racing there and then going back making my truck series debut there that was just incredible 
incredible. It was insane. Yeah, so talk about that truck debut. You know, I bet the emotions are high when you pass that, that little a little short track in the infield for the first time you looked over and you're like well it's funny because the way they had it set up um they had the cup guys in the cup garage and then the xfinity cars in the xfinity garage and then the the trucks we were in kind of like a media parking lot and my very first race in a legend car or in a bandolero was on uh cup weekend mm -hmm. in 2008 so we parked in that same exact parking lot so rolling in there in the truck series, parking in the same parking lot, and then going out on track uh, at your home track, it's, I mean, you can't even describe what that's like, you know, going in and out of there, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of times in and out of the tunnel, and then walking in and out of there as a, as a Camper World Truck Series driver, it, it's really humbling, and um, it, it was really cool, you know, to get there, um, and really, really made me happy knowing that all the hard work was, was starting to pay off at that point. So you transitioned to the truck series, you know, was there like a big realization moment to you? There's like something that happened in those first couple, one to two starts that made you feel like, wow, this is, this is big, you know, I got a lot of learning to do. I think, well, I'll be honest, I was really, really, really nervous for that first truck series race at Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I had, I had been an instructor at the Petty Experience and been around that track several times with, with those cars, but it's a completely different thing. Never driven a truck before. Um, at, at 180, 190 miles an hour, um, you know, I, I was watching interviews and I was watching tape and trying to learn as much as possible before going in there. And everybody who, who all the drivers were saying that Atlanta Motor Speedway is one of the hardest mile and half tracks. So I was just thinking, am I ready for this? Am I ready to go on, on at Atlanta Motor Speedway in a truck? You know, am, am I gonna wreck it first lap? There's a lot of pressure because yeah. if I go out there and wreck it, then no, you know, nobody's gonna give me a shot after that. So. Um, I was going into it really cautious, but I knew as soon as I did three quarters of a lap and I got through turn three and four, I was completely comfortable. I said, yeah. oh, okay, well, this, I don't want to say it's easy, but I was like, okay, I got this. This, yeah. this is good. And um, I think just uh, just doing, you know, doing that first start, we started 29th and finished 18th. We were, like, super happy with that. And then uh, didn't get to race again until Pocono in, I guess it was June and um or no august mm -hmm. and so i've been out of the car for so long so that was kind of the second test it's like okay so let's make sure that wasn't just you know luck yeah. that you know i got got that finish so we went out to pocono and finished 16th and then went to michigan t two weeks later and finished 14th yeah. so every every time i got on the track i got better every lap i got better um and you know, it really gave me the compass to say, hey, maybe, maybe I can do this. Maybe I, maybe I, I do belong here as a driver, and, and you know, just trying to get as, as, as good as I can. Yeah. Has it been the same for Xfinity, or do you kind of have more confidence since you did it in the truck series? I actually, so I made my Xfinity series debut in, in uh, Homestead last year with Derek Cope in the seventy car, and um, I couldn't believe how, how comfortable I was getting into the car. Um, you know, obviously running the truck, I didn't, I didn't know anybody that's all I ran um that year and then I got an Xfinity car and I was like super comfortable I was like well this, this could be pretty cool and then going into, into 2016 we didn't we were looking to go truck racing because I had some connections there and you know had some car owners or truck owners that I would talk was was talking to but nothing was really happening and we didn't even look at the Xfinity series and uh then you know I got a call from uh, Jay Motorsports and uh he told me to come down and Johnny wanted to talk to me and um you know, I started racing for them, and um, this year, I just, it's been really, really good. I mean, I didn't have any, any expectations. I said, you know, this is the second highest stock car series in the world, you know, um, let's see, let's see how we do, and, and I was actually really nervous that, you know, maybe I was going too fast, but, uh, you know, again, starting right off the bat at Atlanta Speedway, I was comfortable. Uh, my crew chief from, uh, uh, from my truck series debut, came came on board for me this this year with Jenny Motorsports, Danny Gill, and uh, he's he's really given me a lot of confidence. And every every time that we have a different hurdle, um, we're able to, to to jump that hurdle and, and you know do what I need to do. And um, we finished every single race, every every single every single lap, and uh, haven't haven't had to change any sheet metal, knock on wood. So um, it's it's been really good. How big how big a year was last year for you? You did. You know, truck series got to the Xfinity series. It seemed like a really big learning year for you. It's, I mean, <laughs> for me, it was uh, a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Ever since I 
watched NASCAR ever since I wanted to be a driver. I was, you know, 13 or 14 years old when I got that inclination, hey, I, I maybe want to drive. And, you know, I, my dreams since then were, hey, I want to be a NASCAR driver. And when I, when I show up and I look at my suit and it says NASCAR Cabriol Truck Series patch on it, I was like, wow, this is like, this is real. And then they go do it and do well at it and, you know, exceed all my expectations and I exceeded the team's expectations. Um, they were just really happy with it. Yeah. So it was, um, uh, it was, it was yeah, a good experience for sure. Yeah. So, you know, you talk about that uh, NBC um, ride along that you got to do with Dale Jarrett and, um, mm -hmm. and those guys. Uh, I think you called that one of the best moments of your life. Yeah, that was, uh, I could have died happy that night. <laughs> um, no, so Dale Jarrett, since I was a little kid, um, was my all-time favorite NASCAR driver, um, my favorite racing hero. And I got a call from the producer of NBC Sports Network and said, hey, um, what, what are you doing today? And uh, said, uh, I don't know, I'm just hanging out. I'm probably going to go to the track later. He said, well, uh, if you can come to the track, um, if you're in town, um, we'd like you to, to you know, do an event for us. And I said, okay, that's, that sounds pretty cool. And he said, how'd you like to be on track with uh, Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte, and Dale Jarrett? And I was like, <laughs> sign me up. Let's go. So um, I just, I couldn't believe how that worked out. And, um, we got to drive the petty cars for uh, Jeff Burton's hot laps for an M NBCSN segment, and just getting to stand there, it was, a, it was a really cool picture I got to post on my Facebook. It was um, all four of us, me, Jeff, Dale, and Bobby, and we were all in NBCSN suits, and I was just looking, and I just stared at the picture, and to this day, it's like, I can't believe that I'm standing next to my next to my hero, Yeah. Um, and these legends of the sport, I mean, it was just so incredible, so um, it was... Um, it was a cool, really cool experience for me. What was it like on track where you just, you know, driving down there, <laughs> just looking at those guys? I bet you never had that type of feeling. No, before. no. And, and, you know, Dale retired, you know, a few years back. And, yeah. you know, I said, well, I'm, I'm never going to be able to race with Dale. And that's the closest that, that I can get. And just to be on track with those guys. And um, even though we weren't, you know, racing or running, running, you know, very fast, it was still super cool experience yeah. to just be there and just look around and see man, there's, I'm on track with some legends in the sport. Yeah. It was a really cool experience. I'll, I'll never forget. And to this day, it's one of my favorite experiences um, that I've had since I started racing. Yeah, so, in the Richard Petty driving experience, you're an instructor. So, you know, what do you do there? You know, why did you get into that? And, and what do you do on that side? Yeah, so, in 2010, uh, after I graduated high school, I um, did a development program with them called the Richard Petty Driver Search. And that gave me the opportunity it was a four day training camp and that gave me the opportunity to work for them I got a call after I did the training camp and at that point I didn't really know where I was going to go I was still living in Georgia I knew I needed to get to Charlotte and uh, didn't really know what I was going to do and they called me and they said hey you know, want a job with us and I said absolutely so um, I moved up in March of 2011 and uh, worked for them I started buckling on pit road and being flag man and just learning the company, learning what you know what they do, and then uh, graduated to driving instructor and ride driver, and I did that for four or five years, and I still do special events for them, ride yeah. ride events every once in a while, but um, I give a lot of my, um, I guess my my success on track and getting getting up to speed so quickly to the experience that I got, you know, you know, working for those guys because I got to drive, you know. 13 or 14 different NASCAR tracks before I even competed in NASCAR. So going up to, like I said, going up to Land Rover Speedway, I knew all the bumps, I knew the lines, I knew what I needed to do, I kind of knew the car feel from the petty stuff, and um, it, it was a, a huge opportunity for me because I couldn't do late models, I didn't have the money to do late models or modifieds or, or any of the short track, uh, short track, anything above legend cars really, so... Um, so that, that gave me the opportunity to not only make a living, but, um, but learn and, right. and do what I needed to do, and um, it's really paying off. Did you jump from Legend Cars right to the driving experience? Was that your first stock car driving? Yeah, that was my first stock car driving going in there, um, and then uh, my first time in an ARCA car was at Daytona, 
and then my first time competing in the Arca series was a Pocono. So wow. I made a huge jump from Legend Cars to Arca, and they still tell me that I was crazy for doing that. But the opportunity was there. I had the sponsor. Um, they wanted to be on TV. I said, uh, you know, I I couldn't say no. Yeah. And, you know, I just had to do what I needed to do, and um, it, it luckily worked out. It could have gone really bad, though. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, talk about another experience or another opportunity that you hear with JD Motorsports. So, kind of describe the process of joining this team. You said it was just a phone call that you got from Johnny to get everything started. Yeah, it was. Um, like I said, going into this this season, I <laughs> it was about two weeks out from Daytona, and nothing was going, nothing, nothing was happening. Any of the deals were falling falling apart, and uh, uh, I really had no idea what I was going to do this year, and I was really worried, and really nervous, but I said thing will work out and uh and we just started working together it was originally supposed to be the first three races and then we were just kind of kind of go week to week to see what we can do um we did so well the first three that uh johnny said let's just let's keep going so we went to california did really well there went to texas did really well there um went to bristol went to richmond you know kept cars clean kept cars together um had good finishes and uh, you know we're up the point. We're up 17th in points right now, and um, I think I think 20 or 22nd owners points. So you know Johnny was just really happy, and um, you know I'm just working on my side, on the sponsorship side every every week. Um, JD Motorsports is doing the same, and it's really really cool to be to get a shot with an established team and somebody who has so much respect, yeah. um, like Johnny does. Um, I haven't heard. A single bad thing said about Johnny, uh, you know, s before I got here, since I was here, and um, you know, in the future, I, I hope to work with him for, for a long time, and um, we have a really, really good relationship, and we're just we're just doing what we can to to you know stay up there in points and uh, get the best finishes that we can. What was the pressure like? Was there pressure when you first started? I guess it wasn't a full time deal to start. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely pressure because again, I. It was basically a job interview when when I when I went to Atlanta for the first time I was basically you know interviewing for for my future yeah. with with JD Motorsports so I knew that I, I needed to perform I knew that I needed to keep keep his cars clean I, I understood his program um, and what we needed to do um, you know I wanted to come here and improve the program improve the the, the zero car program um, hopefully help the four and the oh one. Um, it's been really cool working with both my teammates Ross and, and Ryan, excuse me, Ryan Priest, and um, learn a ton from them. I mean, you know, Ross has a ton of experience, you know, in these type of cars. Uh, Ryan's got a ton of, of short track experience, yeah. and um, you know, just kind of bouncing off each other. And like I said, I I told Johnny at the, at the beginning, I said, you know, whatever you want, you know, I'm here to improve the team and, and help you guys out as much as possible. And, yeah. Um, it's it's been really 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 good uh, good year so far. Yeah. And your teammates, uh, you know, how, how do you guys complement each other? Because you seem to really, you seem to be really brought together. You know, Ryan's on the short track side. You get you're a really good plate racer so far this year. So how do you guys complement each other? How do you, how do you enjoy your teammates? Yeah, I mean it's it's good. Anytime that you have teammates that you can bounce off um, when you go out, make a run. Say say they go out first or I will go out first. We'll talk to each other. We'll say, hey, what, what did your car do? All of our cars, you know, we have different driving styles, but but we have a similar setup under them. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes they'll throw in something in my car to test, and they'll throw in something in Ross's car to test, and, and Ryan's car. So um, it's really, really cool to have that, especially, you know, being my first year, being a rookie, um, you know, not not having a lot of laps. You know, before this, this season, I had a total of maybe 10 uh, 10 stock car races under my belt total and uh, like I said I didn't have any expectations and it's been really really cool to work with those guys yeah so of the three of you guys who do you think talks the most who's the most talkative who do you think talks the most yeah oh I, I don't know we're all pretty uh, pretty talkative yeah depends on the situation I guess <laughs> um, depends on how our cars are running Whoever, yeah. whoever's car is running the best that, that person probably talks the most right <laughs> Um, what would you say is your biggest positive from this year? The the biggest moment that you point to to say, okay, we're definitely making progress. Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte was, and still is, my best race of the year. I think um, we ran we ran twelfth at, at Talladega and ran thirteenth at Daytona, which are really good. Yeah. But 
plate races, it's a crapshoot. I mean, yeah. you don't you don't know you know whether you're gonna you know finish finish first or uh, finish thirtieth upside down. Sure. You know, in the in the in the grass. So um, Charlotte was really really good for me. I love the mile and a half tracks. So yeah. that's my favorite t- favorite type of racing. Um, and going there and finishing a legitimate fifteenth. Um, we had really, really good speed. We got the car driving really, really good. Um, and just, you know, being able to compete with those guys and, you know, passion, passing some of the guys that, that, that uh, are cup teams. Um, that was really, really cool. Um, and uh, I actually, a lot of guys after that, you know, came and, and congratulated me on that, on that finish, a lot of my peers that I raced with. And that was just, just cool to kind of gain, gain the respect from those guys. But um, I, I don't want to say it's a turning point because we were we – were, since the very first race we've improved um i don't think we've really had a a a race that we've we've had any issues with um but that race everything just kind of came together the car really wasn't driving uh good to start out with but danny made some really good adjustments and i mean we just got it really fast and we we got lucky with the lucky dog a couple times and um stayed on the lead lap and uh, it was just everything about that race was just really really cool and to do it at Charlotte, to do it, you know, at a, at a track so high speed, you have to have really good motor, really good equipment. Um, to run 15th there, it was, it was really, really special. What's it like to race around those cup guys, Kyle Busch and Kyle <laughs> Watson, you know? It's, uh, it's interesting. They're, uh, man, they, you know, they're cup guys for a reason. Um, they've got a, a lot of experience. Um, I remember Atlanta, my first race this year, going off into the corner, and I think Brad, Brad Kozlowski came around me, and, uh, I kind of got got under under him a little bit, and I saw his uh, his front tires and the front tires are just going like this, and I was like, wow, he's really digging that thing. Um, but just you know, being around him, and I think it's so important for us to race around him because it it shows them that uh, you try to gain respect yeah. and you try to show them, hey, we're not going to get around you, we're not going to get in your way, um, you know, we're not going to wreck you. Obviously, we want to race with him and um, we want to pass him. Uh, but you know, in certain situations, uh, you just want to show them that that hey, you know, I'm a rookie. I'm not going to be in the way. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to wreck every corner. I'm not going to wreck you. Yeah. So to build that trust, especially at you know plate races and some of the faster tracks, to build that trust to race door to door with those guys is really important. Um, and it's it's a huge learning experience. Yeah. And I mean, you know, from a uh, from a personal standpoint, it's really cool because I used to watch those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was a kid. And uh, you know, get guys like Kevin Harvick and you know Brad and um, and uh, Kyle Busch and you know before I even started racing, I was watching those guys and it's like, man, now I'm racing door to door with them. Like we're you know equal, so to speak. I mean, yeah. it's it's really really cool. Yeah. So a few straightforward questions to end here, you know. So why do you race? Um, <laughs> that's a that's a good one. Yeah. I just so my very first time I got interested in NASCAR as a driver Um, I was 13 or 14 in Georgia always been a a, a NASCAR fan and I got on these amusement park go-karts and I doing laps and uh, I got off those go-karts and it was like a a light switch I told my parents I want to be a race for never right then and there Um, that's just from then on that's just that's always been what I wanted to do I just I love the feel I love the speed I love I uh, love doing I love every part of it I love the uh, I love the media side I yeah. love the interviews um, I love the fans everything about racing um, there's nothing that I don't like about it so um, it's a uh, it's really cool and even the business side of it um, I've really gotten in, interested in the business side of it um, the sponsorship side the marketing side um, all of, I mean I I just I love it all yeah. so it's um. It's just <laughs> ever since I got on the, that go kart, um, I I don't think I really realized what was all involved. But once I once I learned about it and realized, you know what it was all about, it was just that was it. Who do you race for? Do you race for anybody? <laughs> Who do I race for? I guess I race for for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just I it's always been a family sport for me, so um, I just. I don't know. Yeah. I, my family's always been involved. Um, 
I'm a Christian, so I uh, I always pray before races. Um, you know, I, I I'm a firm believer in anything. anything you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And um, and it's uh, you know, it's just been it's a dream come true to to get to this point. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah. And final question. Um, do you see yourself going to the Cup Series soon? Um, you know, you've been to the trucks. Xfinity, one year, two years from now, um, where do you see yourself? I, I hope so. Um, yeah. I mean, it just depends on the opportunities. Um, you know, I, I couldn't tell you that I'd be sitting here in uh, in the JD Motorsports uh, yeah. holler, racing full time at Xfinity. Um, you know, six months ago. So, um, I I hope so. That's the goal. Um, my all time goal um, from the beginning, uh, when they opened the NASCAR Hall of Fame. I've, I've said it from the beginning. I said, you know, I want to I want to be there as a driver one day. So that's the ultimate goal, and um, you know, it's we'll see how it plays out. But uh, yeah. it's uh, it's it's been a ride so far. Yeah, that's for sure. Definitely appreciate your time. Yeah, great answers, man. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Good luck today. And yeah. tomorrow.